Hello viewers, welcome to AP's Ophthalmology Pearls. Today we should discuss pattern strabismus. What is pattern strabismus? It is a significant change of horizontal alignment in midline up gaze or down gaze from the bismus. We can understand this better by studying the various types along with examples. They are also referred to as alphabet patterns as many of the deviation variations look like alphabets. Why do these patterns occur? The origin of pattern strabismus is probably multifactorial. Oblique muscle overaction is the most common cause of AV pattern strabismus. Muscle pulleys or sleeves are considered to be the functional origin of extraocular muscles. The pulleys are comprised of annular condensations of the posterior tenons composed of collagen, elastin and smooth muscle. Ectopic muscle pulleys play a role in some cases. Ocular torsion Restricted horizontal muscles and anomalous innervation are less common causes. A rotated orbit is the cause in craniofacial uh, abnormalities. The incidence is from 12 to 50 percent of cases of horizontal strabismus. Of these, A and V patterns are the most common, V more common than A, and this can occur in either orthophoria, esodeviation, or exodeviation in the primary position. A and V patterns commonly occur as a result of oblique muscle overaction which may either be primary or secondary to weakness of the ipsilateral antagonist. We shall see some of the more common examples of these patterns. We know that the superior oblique causes depression and abduction. The abducting force is greatest in down gaze and therefore there is a greater divergence of the eyes in down gaze. Now let's see a case of right esotropia with superior oblique overaction. Pay, clo pay close attention to the right eye. This would be midline up gaze and in midline down gaze you can see the relative divergence of the right eye due to superior oblique overaction. The difference from up gaze to down gaze should be at least 10 prism diopters to be considered significant for an A pattern strabismus. In levo depression, which is the field of action of the right superior oblique, you can clearly see the superior oblique overaction, also termed over depression in adduction. This would have been the position of the right eye. With overaction, there is relative divergence producing an A pattern esotropia. You can also see the over depression in adduction due to superior oblique overaction in levo depression. Now let's see a case of right exotropia with superior oblique overaction. This is midline up gaze and in midline down gaze again you can see the greater divergence of the right eye due to superior oblique overaction producing an A pattern exotropia. So superior oblique overaction produces an A pattern strabismus. Without superior oblique overaction, this would have been the position of the right eye. With overaction, there is greater divergence in down gaze. You can also see the over depression in adduction due to the superior oblique overaction in levo depression. Orbital anomalies can also cause pattern strabismus. A pattern esotropia is often associated with upward slanting palpebral apertures. Now let's see a case of right esotropia with inferior oblique overaction. Just as superior oblique overaction cause, uh, uh, causes an A pattern strabismus, inferior oblique overaction causes a V pattern strabismus. The abducting action of the inferior oblique is greatest in elevation and hence there is a greater divergence that is in a case of esotropia there is less convergence in up gaze. The difference from up gaze to down gaze should be at least 15 prism diopters to be considered significant for a V pattern strabismus. You can appreciate the V pattern here. You can also see the over elevation in adduction due to inferior oblique overaction in levo elevation. Similarly, for an exotropia with inferior oblique overaction, you can see uh, the greater divergence in up case. You can appreciate the V pattern here. A downward slant can give rise to a V pattern exotropia. This is a Cruzon syndrome again with V pattern uh, strabismus. 
The next is the Y pattern where the horizontal deviation remains stable from midline down gaze to primary position and a relative, relative divergence is seen on up gaze. It is commonly seen in bilateral inferior oblique overaction which is often associated with infantile esotropia and intermittent exotropia. The picture here is that of primary bilateral inferior oblique overaction. A Y pattern is also seen in Brown syndrome and Duane's retraction syndrome with upshoot. Another V pattern subtype is the arrow pattern where convergence largely occurs between primary position and midline down gaze. The presence of an arrow pattern and extortion in down gaze is virtually diagnostic for bilateral superior oblique palsy. Let's understand this for easier remembering. When both the superior oblique and the inferior rectus act together, the abduction of the superior oblique neutralizes the adduction of the inferior rectus and the intorsion of the superior oblique neutralizes the extorsion of the inferior rectus and the eye looks straight down. When the superior oblique is weak, the inferior rectus produces unrestricted adduction and extortion. When this occurs bilaterally, the typical arrow pattern is produced. The lambda pattern and A pattern subtype is characterized by divergence in down gaze without much change in the horizontal deviation from primary position to up gaze. A lambda pattern is most frequently associated with bilateral superior oblique overaction or inferior oblique weakness. The inferior oblique weakness is seen as a deficient elevation in adduction, a finding also seen in Brown syndrome. As discussed, in Brown syndrome, there is a Y subtype of V pattern strabismus in contrast to the lambda subtype of A pattern that is seen in inferior oblique weakness. In the X pattern, a relative divergence of the eyes is seen in both up gaze and down gaze compared to the primary position. It is seen when there is a tight lateral rectus either from contracture following a large angle exotropia or type 3 duanes. When the eye attempts to adduct against a tight lateral rectus, it behaves like a leash and then when the eye moves up, the muscle slips up causing the eye to move up and out. The reverse happens in down movement. The diamond pattern strabismus is due to a tight medial rectus where there is a relative convergence in up gaze and down gaze. Coming to the presentation, abnormal head posture is absent if the deviation does not allow fusion in any head position. If the deviation is small enough to allow fusion in either up gaze or down gaze, then a chin up or chin down position may be adopted. Let's first see what happens in a V exotropia and an A esotropia. In a V exotropia, the divergence is less in down gaze and in A esotropia, there is less convergence in down gaze and so more near to normal distance. So in order to simulate that position, the patient adopts a chin up posture. Similarly, in a V esotropia, the convergence is less in up gaze, uh, so is the divergence in an A exotropia. So the patient adopts a chin down posture. An easy way to remember this is vexo up. That is, in a V exotropia, a chin up posture is seen. Once you know one of them, you can derive the others. So, V exotropia and A esotropia, chin up posture. Conversely, V esotropia and A exotropia, chin down posture. Apart from abnormal head posture, some adults who were previously asymptomatic may become symptomatic when they start wearing presbyopic correction. Having to move their eyes into down gaze to read through the bifocal segment or when they switch from bifocals to wide transition zone progressives, they have to move their eyes further down earlier to read. 
How do you measure the deviations in order to detect a pattern strabismus? The patient should fixate on an accommodative target at distance. Full refractive correction should be worn. A prism and alternate cover test should be performed in the primary position and in the 25 degree up and 25 to 35 degree down gaze. These chin up and chin down positions may be quantified with the help of a ruler and protractor. In addition, the presence of any over elevation or over depression in adduction should be noted. Also, any torsion should be assessed by indirect ophthalmoscopy. Surgical management is recommended when there is a clinically significant pattern and or any abnormal head position. Coming to the general principles of surgical management, binocular vision is in the primary position and in downward gaze is much more important than on upward gaze and surgery should be planned accordingly. Any horizontal deviation should also be addressed during the procedure. For pattern strabismus associated with apparent overaction of the oblique muscles, weakening of the oblique muscles is performed. If there is no oblique overaction, vertical transposition of horizontal muscles should be performed. For overaction of the inferior oblique or over elevation in adduction, weakening of inferior oblique muscles is performed and for superior oblique overaction or over depression in adduction, weakening of superior oblique muscles is performed. Vertical transposition of horizontal muscles, muscles causes weakening of the recti. The recti should be shifted in the dire direction in which they need to be weakened. For example, in a V exotropia, there is greater divergence in up gaze. So to weaken the lateral recti, they must be transposed superiorly. The others can be similarly derived. Lateral recti are operated upon in exotropia and medial recti in esotropia to weaken them. The mnemonic male can be remembered. The medial recti are moved towards the apex and the lateral recti towards the open space. A Y pattern can be corrected depending on the exact cause. Superior oblique tendon tuck for an arrow pattern uh, is done for a superior oblique palsy. Uh, medial rectus recession may be performed for a diamond pattern strabismus. So that's it for today. If you like what you saw, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from APs of the Moji Pearls. You may watch my other videos by clicking on the thumbnails. Please leave a note in the comment section if you wish for any particular topic to be covered in future. Look forward to regular updates. Thank you for watching.